Welcome to another Geotech video. In this video, we'll be covering the use of the pocket penetrometer and portable tour vane uh, to use in the field for gathering undrained shear strength. These tools are a powerful way to characterize fine-grained soil. So when you're out in the field and you uh, identify some clays or some silts, you can use these tools to help estimate undrained shear strength. It's important to remember that this test will not work for sands, and you have to be very careful if there are any large gravels or any cobbles because this will uh, introduce a lot of error in your tests. So just make sure that when you're testing you you've correctly identified that it's a fine grained soil and then you can quickly uh, proceed with the test. Well actually I just want to cover some of the equipment that you'll need in order to to do these tests. The first thing that you want to bring is your field notebook. So make sure that you bring your notebook and your pen or pencil with you. You'll also want to bring a wire brush and uh, some sort of towel with you to clean off your tools when you're done with them. Of course, you'll need a sample of soil to test with. And then you'll want to make sure you bring a complete set of either your pocket penetrometer or your tour vane or both tools if you want. And a complete set will include some Allen wrenches, footing adapters, as well as the instrument itself. And before you begin your test, make sure that you've identified a good location to do your test. It should be generally free of any sort of loose debris, any construction material. If there's any other roots or vegetations, make sure that you uh, select a good spot that is free of those things. And then once you've selected a spot, take good notes in your notebook. Uh, you can take notes such as the weather, uh, location description, the date as well, uh, the depth that you tested, and any other uh, variables or factors that might be important. Also, make sure that you include some sort of description of the so soil that you're testing. Uh, sometimes these tests are associated with test pits as well, so if you are doing a test pit nearby, uh, make sure that you attach uh, a complete boring log with these test results. So, we'll start by using the pocket penetrometer. Both these tests are very simple, but you'll, you'll take the cap off the tip of the penetrometer. And before you test with it, make sure that the tip is clean so you can use your wire brush to, to clean it off. Or you can use your hand towel to wipe it. So this test is done by compressing the, a spring within the pocket penetrometer and it will push this white band until failure occurs in the soil. So to do the test, you wanna reset the band to zero. You'll also notice right here, a little groove uh, that is used to indicate the end of the test. The test ends when you uh, compress the soil up to this point. So we'll try that out now. So just find a good spot, a representative spot in your soil and then begin by pushing down slowly, not too fast. And then eventually, actually this is quite hard. My remolded clay is quite hard. You've noticed that it starts to accelerate the speed at which it penetrates. And now we're done. So you'll take the reading at the top of the band or the point that's closest to the tip and right here, I'm getting around 3.0. Then you'll write this in your notebook. Usually we'll do this test three times and then take the average of the three readings and use that as our uh, design or recorded value. So we'll try this two more times on this same soil. And it's important to not get too close to the, the first location So this was a little bit stiffer, about 3.7. And again, 3.7. And it's 
often good practice to clean, clean your penetrometer after each use. I didn't do that here because it didn't collect too much debris. But if you see that it's picking up a lot of debris, make sure that you clean it off first before using it again. And the last thing that I want to note with the pocket penetrometer is that uh, the value itself, you actually get the same design value from both the a tour vein and the pocket penetrometer, but the pocket penetrometer is testing it not quite in shear. You can actually divide the number by two, and that would give you the undrained shear strength. So when you're back uh, in the office, you can do all these calculations. You can divide it by two, and you can also apply correction factor if you use a smaller footing. So this footing would increase the applied area of the pocket penetrometer. Um, in this case, you'd use this if there's very soft soil and you wanna increase the applied area. So this is helpful if you're trying to identify a really soft soils, which often isn't the case on an EMI project. You wanna be finding stiff soil. But if you do come across soft soil, this is one alternative. The units on the pocket penetrometer are the same as in the tour vein as well, and that's uh, kilograms per centimeter square or tons per square feet. Uh, the units are about the same. The penetrometer itself is divided into units of, the major unit is 0.5 and the minor unit is 0.25. And for our purposes, we can interpolate a little bit. So if you are up to it, you can read to the nearest 0.1 unit. It just requires some guessing, but not too far off. The correction factor for this one, uh, this manufacturer is 0.625, so you'll just multiply by that factor. You could do it in the field or you could do it back in the office. And that is a pocket penetrometer. So we'll put that aside. The tour vein is uh, similarly easy to use. You wanna make sure that you start by cleaning off each of the, uh, the teeth at the bottom. So I'll use a wire brush to kind of clear that out. And the way that the, the tour vein works, there's an internal spring that will push this dial around. And as you shear it, the dial will move in its place. And then the, the test ends once you've made a full rotation one other thing that you'll want to make sure you do is to indent the soil all the way to the edge of the teeth. So once you've fully penetrated the soil, uh, you can start shearing it. So before we begin, we'll reset this to zero. We'll, put, we'll press down until our teeth are all the way sunk. And then slowly shear it clockwise. And this is quite stiff soil, so you're going to have to get a better grip. So actually, this soil is very stiff, so I'm going to take off, or I'm going to add a, a foot. So you can use this for softer or stiffer soil, so this tool is very versatile. Try it again. Press down. Inch. Make sure you reset the dial. Here we go. All right, so we got a reading of about 0.6. So we'll record that. One more thing that I want you to make sure that you know in your logs is uh, the orientation that you do the testing. Sometimes you'll find it convenient to test on the side of a borehole. 
And this isn't necessarily the direction of loading that you'll have for a foundation or for uh, other types of structures. So you'll just want to note where you're testing. If you're doing it in a test pit, you'll often find that a lot of the soil is slumped or uh, collapsed. So you might also want to bring a, a shovel with you to expose some bare soil. So once you've uh, collected all your information, make sure you take good notes about the type of adapter that you're using, uh, whether or not it's a pocket penetrometer or the tor vein, and then you'll be able to reduce this once you're back in the office. Uh, I want to refer you guys to the design guide. There's a nice boring log in the back of the design guide which provides a detailed summary of uh, what these undrained shear strength parameters mean for your soil, whether or not it's stiff or soft or hard. Uh, these are all good classifications that help you inform your foundation design decisions. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks.